The University of Otago has just hosted its 50th foreign policy school. Professor Robert Patman is one of the directors and he's here to tell us all about it. Good evening. Good evening, Rebecca. What is the foreign policy school? Well, the foreign policy school was established in the mid-60s by someone called Arnold Entwistle and it started off as a small seminar, a weekend seminar, and it's morphed into a major international conference, but it's retained its original name, mm. school. Uh, the emphasis is on educating New Zealanders about international affairs. Who's involved? Um, there's a number of participants, and this is what makes the school distinctive. Uh, firstly, the foreign ministry have been involved in the school right from the beginning in the mid-60s, and from in the first decade, they started the tradition of sending new recruits to immerse themselves in the world of ideas for two days, and now that has consolidated and deepened. Uh, for example, this, this, this year, um, something like 34 uh, new recruits came mm. from the foreign ministry. This is a regular feature. There are people from other ministries, such as defence, treasury, um, primary industries. There's also representatives of the diplomatic community. Various embassies send their ambassadors along and diplomatic representatives. And in addition, there are academics and students and interested members of the public. It's, it's open to anyone. Very, very wide focus indeed. What was the theme this year? This year, it was an ambitious theme to mark the 50th. It was called New Zealand and the World, Past, Present and Future. Ooh. What's been the most significant change to New Zealand's international relations? I think, the, personally, I think, you know, this is a d contested matter, but I personally think the most significant change occurred in the 70s when the United Kingdom joined the European Union, or what's then called the European Common Market. Um, and I think that really was a, a huge change for this country. Um, it was clear by the 60s, early 60s, that this was, gonna likely, it, this was likely to happen. But in the 70s when it occurred, in 1973, it made it clear that New Zealand had to diversify its foreign policy. Mm. And that meant that New Zealand increasingly developed an independent foreign policy from that point onwards. Mm. Are there any outcomes from this particular conference? Um, from this particular conference, it's a bit early to say. We had some very lively debates. There was a very interesting panel discussion about the relationship between uh, uh, intelligence and national security. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, different speakers of different persuasions. We had people talking about climate change and New Zealand foreign policy. And uh, yeah, there was a number of different themes um, considered at the conference. Mm. How does the university benefit? I think, the, you know, I think, first of all, I think it's a mutual benefit both to the university and to institutions like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. The university clearly, uh, if you like, gets the credit for running something which attracts practitioners. Mm. Um, often these two institutions are compartmentalised, you know, government and the universities don't always mix. But this is one occasion where both come together for mutual benefits. I think, I think the foreign ministry gets the, uh, gets the benefit for them is that they're their day-to-day -day practitioners get the chance to move away from the pressures of Wellington and immerse themselves in ideas. And for the university, it's a chance to actually rub shoulders with people who are actually at the front line, at the coalface, making foreign policy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. Mm -hmm. Now, with so many people from Wellington coming down to this yeah. particular school, does it influence politics? I think it does, but I think you've got to look at it in the long term. Uh, I think it certainly has an impact on society. Um, and, and at the institutional level, that is, the ideas are discussed, they're taken away and thought about, and sometimes may form the basis of discussions within government ministries. But I don't think, uh, Rebecca, you can say, you know, that the 2015 school generated policy changes X, Y, and Z mm. within six months. It doesn't work that way. I do think, however, it does have a significant impact uh, in the long term. Mm. What's been the most interesting part for you? Um, I think the most interesting part is simply seeing the, sheer, the, the range of different presentations and also seeing the interaction, seeing people who previously had no connection, no professional connection, but share an interest in foreign affairs coming together. They often make friendships despite themselves, um, despite their different views, which you know stand the test of time. And I think that's very, very good. Mm. From the University of Otago, Professor Robert Patman, thank you once again thank for you. your time.